Well, you may be wondering, why do we have a safety tip on gas direct injection? Well, it's all about the pressure. Now, in addition to normal safety tips, using uh, drop lights that aren't incandescent bulbs, for example, using fluorescent lights instead, having a charged up fire extinguisher handy just in case, no smoking, no welding, nothing like that near the vehicle if you're opening up a fuel system, using an approved container to drain a gas tank into if you have to drain a tank. All those safety precautions still need to be followed, including safety glasses. But we want to add another one, and that's dealing with the high pressure. So high pressure vehicles such as this one, while not near as high a pressure as a diesel, which can reach up to 30,000 pounds per square inch, 3,000 pounds per square inch comes out of these GDI pumps and that little line that goes between the pump and the fuel rail. And to avoid cracking the line loose and having that high pressure squirt out at you with enough pressure to be like a pressure washer with a cutting tip and ripping your flesh open, you want to avoid that by depressurizing the system. We're going to give you two methods today in this tech tip on how to depressurize the system. One method we know does not work, and we're not going to tell you about that one. That's called the wait for the pressure to decay. We've seen cars in the past where the fuel rail had pressure on it a day or even two days after the engine was shut off. So you want to monitor the pressure, and we can do that with an OE level scan tool. We're also going to use this OE level scan tool to depressurize the system. Most of them have a feature where you can actually command, or I should say request, that the ECM, you go into the ECM in your pathing, the ECM then commands the fuel pump control module to shut off and supply no more low pressure from the tank to the high pressure pump on the back of the camshaft. So if no low pressure comes in here, this can do all it wants to right here with the, with the with plunger. It's not going to get the high pressure out because it never got any fuel to pump. So that's what we're going to do with the scan tool. We can also monitor, believe it or not, we want to make sure even the do-it-yourselfers are safe as well. You can monitor that same data parameter for fuel rail pressure with a simple code reader. Most code readers have the ability to read what's called global or generic OBD2. Things like RPMs, MAP, Barrow, coolant sensor values, those kind of things. And nowadays they have the data parameter, most cars do, called fuel rail pressure. We'll see on the Chevy it's around 400 PSI at idle, but if I pull a fuse for the fuel pump control module, then we'll see the fuel basically starve and not get to the high pressure pump and the vehicle will stall as a lack of fuel and we'll have a low pressure somewhere in the 20 psi region we'll see the same thing occur with this scan tool when we do the depressurate depressurization method that the scan tool provides automatically either way you want those pressures way down so that when you do crack a line loose and you use plenty of shop towels to capture any liquid, any fuel dripping out, you're not having a high pressure spray spraying out at you and hitting you and ripping yourself open like a pressure washer. On this particular scan tool, an OTC Encore, I'm gonna go ahead and select, select the vehicle. It's a vehicle I've worked on in the past. It's a 2013 Chevy Malibu with a 2.4 Ecotec. We'll go ahead and select engine control, even though fuel pump control module would seem on the surface to make sense, you'll actually find the depressurization procedure in the ECM. You go down to fuel system and right at the top of the list right here, depressurization, depressurize fuel system. Go ahead and hit continue. And let's go ahead and select some data items because we want to look to see if the high pressure rail goes to zero PSI. And that's what the factory manual tells you to do is to make sure you've got the fuel pressure, the fuel system depressurized. So we'll go ahead and go through parameter IDs. And we'll find the PID for the high pressure fuel. fuel rail pressure sensor, that might be one of them. There's another one for high pressure fuel rail sensor. We'll go ahead and hit apply. 
and sure enough, we're seeing about 440 right down here PSI of pressure. Let's go ahead and depressurize it now. So we'll disable, or I should say enable, the, the depressurized fuel system process. And what will happen is you'll start hearing the engine start to get a little rougher, slow down a little bit. Maybe even the high pressure fuel pump might get a little noisy as it's starving for fuel. But you're not going to ruin it. You're only going to do this for a few seconds. And when it runs out of fuel and our pressure, as we can see now, is barely 26 PSI, the engine will stall. Now it's safe to work on the vehicle. So turn off the key, disconnect the battery cable, and as per factory instructions, you've depressurized the fuel system. So until next time, I'm Dave Hobbs for Delphi Technologies. Thanks for watching this tech tip.